How do I motivate my staff? Hmm. Good morning and welcome to episode number 68 of In The Car With Clint. I'm just chilling in the car park at Dry Creek because I got out early this morning and it was dark and I forgot and I just walked in and I'm like, Oi Duffy, I need to do an In The Car With Clint and we're at 68. And I've run out of things to talk about. And he's like, how do you motivate your staff? And I think he was trying to get more money out of me somewhat or maybe like um, an upgraded coffee machine or something. But I'm going to address that question now. So... Uh, I think it's important to note that um, there's a few things, and let's unpack this. So, motivating your staff, I think it's somewhat important, but um, ultimately, um, the best uh, the best success comes from a team of motivated people that I guess are, are motivated by the, their own successes inside the business and and the business's success. Um, you know, the shortcut or the cheap way to motivate your staff in some ways is finance and you can obviously pay people bonuses or set them some targets and reward them financially or with a holiday or with some food or with coffee or a game. Um, for me, I, I haven't had the greatest success in individual bonuses um, because it can create some cannibalization from salespeople to salespeople or from business to business and I've seen it with... Um, companies that have multiple locations where if one location um, does, well if they hit a target they all get their financial bonus but then they've um, destroyed one of their, the stores that are there, that are, that are in the same chain and they've just reduced the margin for the company and the company doesn't benefit. So for me, uh, staff retention has not really ever been an issue. I have a very um, intelligent and respectable and um you know attendee attendance so there's no sick days there's no long periods of time off a core group of people that have worked for me from 11 to, to 3 to 2 to 1 year uh that uh, i consider above the line i've kind of got this theory where that some, there's going to be staff inside your company that are above the line, they're the people that care about the business, they're the people that um, are, are there for the long haul, they're the people that put in. I I don't, I probably treat people that are above the line differently to people that are below the line and I think that um, people that, I look at the, the staff, sorry for jumping around, there's a lot of answers in this. I think staff, I like to look at it as, you know, our company is the government and the staff are our armed forces and um, it's the responsibility of me as a leader to give them all the tools that they need to do to perform at their best and to stay alive. Um, and that at the end of the day, when, when we finish fighting the war, it's then my responsibility to make sure that I look after them for the rest of their lives. So um, I find that if the people that are working uh, inside the companies aren't worried about stuff so they have no fear about being able to pay their rent or they have no fear about seeing their children or they have no fear about um, food or warmth or heating or love um, then they can freely come to work and concentrate on the goals that I've set for them and do their very best. 90% of people, 99% of people um, uh, are good people and they're gonna they want to come to work and do a great job and go home they get they feel rewarded by it obviously people get motivated for, by different things some people get motivated um, by money some people are motivated by respect and reward some people are motivated by purpose um, I find that it's my job to work out what makes people tick and then um, you know align their personal desires and wants and needs with the businesses desires wants and needs as tightly as possible and then it kind of takes care of itself so the team that I have working for Waterpro Railways and Lawn Hub, uh, my responsibility is just to make sure that I move roadblocks out the way for them and to help them achieve their personal goals and desires. And then I find in turn that I don't really need to motivate them much more to do what I need them to do because they're happy and they're coming to work and they're part of the, part of the deal. So um, now we talked about this the other day with my senior management team that I think that the companies that I own are the best companies to work for in the world for the right people. And the way we operate isn't perfect for everyone, but if you are one of those people that like this, um, then it's not really too hard to motivate them because they know what they're gonna expect. They know what to expect. We're very clear around the kind of companies that, that, that you're gonna work for, and they just come to work and get it done. So the rest of the people that, um, that don't like how this works, 
it's okay. It's maybe not for them. Um, I'm really still craving one of the staff to come to me and say, I don't like it here anymore, or I've never liked it here. The culture is too weird. It's not right. I don't fit in, um, and I want to leave so that I can help them find another job. And I've, I was talking to another business owner about this the other night, and it feels like the last piece in the puzzle of staff motivation. Um, not everyone's going to be happy doing what you're doing, and that's fine. Um, as a leader, I try to create an environment that's beautiful um, for everyone, and not everyone's going to love it. And then I guess the final piece of the puzzle is if you don't love it, come and let me know and I'll help you find another job. And when I say I help you find another job, I can try and put you in touch with the people that I know that are different to me that might run a more regimented, streamlined, library style business. Um, or I can put you in touch with people that might not have weekend work or that might do install work or whatever it might be. And I'll help you in getting the job. So if you've got interviews you need to go to, you can do it in my time and I'll pay you to go. Like I legitimately want someone to do it so that I can prove to people that I don't mind people leaving. Um, if you tell me you don't want to work here, you're not going to get walked. You just will support you in that. So um, that bounced around a bit. Duffy, I'm hoping that was kind of answered some of your questions. Um, if anyone does want to talk to me more about staff engagement, um, onboarding and um, ensuring that the team that you've got working for you values are in line with yours, uh, send me a message. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram at veryclint. You can miss, uh, post a comment in the underneath the video. Um, you can send me an email at get at clint.com.au. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about it. Um, I love talking about business. I think that I've got a relatively good recipe going and it kind of it seems to be working. Um, and if you can take some benefit from that, then that's good. That is it. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry this went to seven minutes, D'Artagnan. I know that you probably haven't got this far um, because of your short attention span. Um, but yeah, that was it. Uh, give the video a like if you like it. Share it with someone if you want to. If not, that's cool too. And don't forget, let's be kind to each other because it's a nice and kind month. Talk to you tomorrow.